supposed to know which is the right career for us? If we're to spend 40 to 50 hours a week, over 10,000 hours a year, we're going to want to choose a career that we're best at and one that we love. And with the average American changing their jobs up to seven times during their lifetime, finding the right career as soon as possible will contribute to better health and help you live a richer and fuller life. The right career is out there waiting for you, and I'm going to help you find it. I'm Freddie Cochran. Welcome to California Careers. Welcome to another edition of California Careers. I'm Freddie Cochran, your host. We are in Manhattan Beach, California with first grade teacher Andrea Badovic. Hi, Andrea. Hello. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate that. My pleasure. Good deal. Andrea is a first grade teacher. What is it like being a first grade teacher? A first grade teacher is a wild adventure every day. One of my favorite things about it is no day is the same. You can plan for the day, what you're going to read, what math you're going to do, if you're going to do an art project, but you never know where the day is going to take you. So I'm very flexible and I can think on my toes and I'm creative, so I'm able to work with the kids. I love it. We got to your classroom today and we have all these beautiful colors in here. It is such like a colorful and beautiful environment for kids. Right, and kids will truly be happy if they have the beauty and the colors and the vibrant. They'll be vibrant if you have a vibrant classroom. So a lot of thought went into the details of, of your classroom. Lots of thought and lots of planning and lots of days after school. Is this your, your typical classroom or do you move to different classrooms in this school? Or you Thankfully, just stay here? we stay here. You stay here. So this, for example, they try and cluster the first grade classes together, mm -hmm. and then there's a row of second grade and third grade and so on. I see. Okay. Let's switch gears for a minute. What is the education that I need to become a teacher? To become a teacher, you definitely have to graduate from high school, okay. and you have to get your bachelor's degree okay. in a four-year program. And when I got my teaching degree, they actually had a separate program called the Teaching Credential Program. Mm -hmm. And I went to school for another two years. Mm -hmm. um, I would seek that out if I were someone striving to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. you, you get way more into the details of what it takes. Mm -hmm. And they will assign you a teacher to emulate or to get into her or his classroom okay. to really learn how to be a teacher. Oh, very cool. Very cool. So let's back up. So we need a college degree. And that can be a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Science. Right. right. Any oh, major? Yes. Any major. Any major. Any major, but if you're just starting mm -hmm. out, if you, if you choose sociology or liberal studies, that mm -hmm. definitely will work for you. Okay. Now, are our grades relevant? Do we need to have, obviously you need, I think, a cumulative 2.0 to get out of college, but do your interviewers, um, do they look at your grades or transcripts? They do. They did, okay. And they need to be official. So keep those grades up yes, in college. Yes, please do. Yes. Okay, good deal. So we've got the college degree. Once we get out of school, how do we get, is it a teaching credential we need to get into a job? It is a teaching credential. Let's talk about that. And there's two types. There's elementary school teaching credential with kindergarten through six. Okay. And then there's secondary, which is middle school and high school. Okay. And the difference is when you become, when you receive a credential for elementary school, you teach all the subjects. Okay. It's called the multiple subject teaching credential. Okay. And the main subjects, of course, are math, science, reading, art, PE. You're, you're responsible for all of it. So I'm responsible for my students in all those areas. Okay. For first grade. Mm -hmm. If you get a secondary credential, then it's more of a middle school or high school atmosphere where you become the history teacher and you have periods. Okay, right. And the right. kids filter through and you'll be teaching the same lesson okay. to those kids. Okay. And they also assign adjunct jobs. Like there's many, um, a lot of coaches also are the history teacher. <laughs> okay, okay, right. Um, so they, since you're only teaching the one subject over and over, they find other places for you. So your K through sixth grade is a single subject credential? Yes. Okay, but you're responsible to teach them math and English. Every and single California state standard wow. or whatever state standards that whatever state you're in you have to teach the standards okay and so when you come to work every day you have the same class all day long every day all day long every okay. day Those wow they're with me <laughs> okay <laughs> wow so when you're uh, we'll get into a typical day as we go on um but if i wanted to 
move up to say seventh grade or, or seventh through twelfth, what I need to I do need to get the different credential. Yeah, so it's called the secondary single. Oh, here we go. It's called mm -hmm. the single single subject credential. Okay. And there are exams that you need to pass. Okay. The first one being the CBEST. Okay. That's now, is that going to get us into the credential, or do we need that to get out? You need uh, that during. During get out. the CBEST. And you know things have changed. I've been <coughs> teaching for 15 years, mm -hmm. so I recommend you just. CBEST and plug it into Google or mm -hmm. somewhere and try and find okay. what it is. And there's an exit exam also, which oh, wow. it's been changed since I've been there. So okay. you'd have to look into that. So we need the college degree. We need the credential. And during the credential, we're going to need the CBEST. Mm -hmm. And there's an exam to get out. Now, that is that a written exam or is that? It's all the above. It's multiple choice, written, math science, it's all the subjects. Do you have to do like an, uh, an audition before uh, anybody? Do you have to get up there and play no, teacher? No, but you will be doing that <laughs> when you interview. There will oh, be a panel. Okay. Okay. Good deal. So let's summarize the, the 7 through 12. So um, is, is that a different type of curriculum for the 7 through 12? We all follow yeah. the California state standards. Okay. And the nice thing for teachers is we spend so much time planning and getting the information to these students yet there's a framework for us. Mm -hmm. So you can literally go down the standards and look at reading and say, oh, have I taught the kids this? Have okay. I taught the kids this? So you can plan that around that. So if you're the science teacher at middle school, mm -hmm. then you would follow the science part of the standards. Okay. And if you're in elementary school, you're following all of them. Let's talk about during the teacher credential, um, what are they teaching us in there, inside the teacher credential school there? Are they teaching you, what specific classes are they teaching you? They are teaching you what the children are going to be learning mm -hmm. and how you are going to present the children this information. Okay. For example, if you're teaching elementary school, they will teach you how to teach a child how to read. Wow, okay. But that means we have to go back to when we learned how to read. Right. So they okay. need to tell us what phonetics are how you mm -hmm. sound out words, what mm -hmm. a digraph is. Wow. Because you're going to be using that lingo to help the kids today. Okay. And we all know how to read, but we need to learn how to teach the kids how to read. Wow. When you get into the teacher credential program, is that like maybe three or four classes, like on a semester system or? Yes. It is? When I okay. went to school, it was a year and a half of mm -hmm. curriculum and then the next half, you worked, you were paired up with a master teacher. Okay. You're called a student teacher, mm -hmm. and you go into her classroom. Mm -hmm. You observe. Okay. By the end of the semester, you are teaching. She is observing. Oh, beautiful. That's part of your course. Nice. Now, do they teach you guys? Um, you know, I was wondered about um, teachers when you're calling on a student and they raise their hand and they they give an answer, but say it's completely off. It's the wrong answer. You're not supposed to say no wrong. Right. You know, how do you how do you learn to encourage them and, and say, well, you know, maybe you're you're right. close or something that's really gonna help something that's really gonna help you with that is when they assign you a master teacher. Okay. And you go in and you watch her okay. or him. Mm -hmm. What I've learned in the courses though is you work in groups with mm -hmm. other teachers and you just throw out ideas and you get scenarios, mm -hmm. almost like an interview. Mm -hmm. A child raises his hand mm -hmm. and blurts out the wrong answer. Mm -hmm. How would you handle that? Okay, so, so hypotheticals. So. Hypotheticals. Okay. So maybe okay. each member would, you know, volunteer their idea how and then you best you come up with the best solution. There's a lot of hypotheticals. Okay. Best solution for you is probably ba based on timing and Based Maybe. on timing and based on thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Maybe your relationship with him we'll get or back her. to you. <laughs> we'll call you. Okay. Right. <laughs> Good deal. Let's switch gears for a minute. Um, a typical day as a first grade teacher. Let's talk about that. Typical day is you will not be arriving when the kids are arriving. Mm -hmm. It's necessary to get to work early. For example, I get to work a half an hour early. Mm -hmm. And it's just to make sure everything's in place. Mm -hmm. The second those kids walk in, you are on mm -hmm. until their day is over. Mm -hmm. You are on, and um, you just have to keep going. There's no, hang on kids, let me go to my file cabinet and get out our next lesson. Mm -hmm. You cannot read the lesson in front of them. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you've read it maybe the day before or that morning, if you're a morning person or you'd rather stay after school, and you prepare for the kids. 
Okay. And that's the style of teacher you are. Okay. Okay. The more you put in, the more you're going to get out of these kids. Do you typically do a lesson plan the night before? You do it a half hour before? Is it? Is it I do it the night before, the and night then before. I fine tune it in the morning. Okay. And so, how many how many hours about are you spending outside of the classroom? Well, let's start in the classroom. What what are your hours? Our hours are from eight fifteen to two fifteen. Okay. That includes a thirty minute snack recess mm -hmm. and a forty minute lunch. Okay, so they get one recess, one lunch. Right, and the recesses are split, so it's two batches of 15 minutes. Okay, um, and so they're out of here about 2.15, mm -hmm. um, and then you go home. On average, how many hours are you spending on your lesson plans? Um, and it's not so much lesson plans, it's mm -hmm. grading all the work they've done. Mm -hmm. It's sharpening pencils. It's <laughs> you're doing the housekeeping and you're doing the filing and okay. the grading and wow. the Xeroxing. Okay. You're everything. Okay. So um, I typically don't leave here. The, the kids leave at 2.15. I typically don't leave here till 4. Wow, okay. And I get here every morning a half hour early. Mm -hmm. And occasionally, if your school allows it, I come in on the weekends to make copies. Wow, you're a busy girl. I'm very busy. I'm very dedicated. We're here in your classroom. Um, I see the tiny little chairs for the little, mm -hmm. little bodies. About how many chairs are there? How many students you got? Uh, 24. 24 that's students. What, that's what okay. the number is. That's a good size. It's a good size. When mm -hmm. I first started teaching about 15 years ago, it was 20 to 1. Now it's 24 to 1. Okay. So okay. a little extra work, but we accept Let's it. talk about uh, what did you do this week, like as, as a teacher, or last week? What, what did you guys, it's spring break right now, but what did you do, say, last week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Let, let's go through a typical week. The great thing about teaching is we have the framework, the California State Standards to okay. follow. So we, because of that, we have materials that are lined out for us. This is oh. what you do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Oh, wow, okay. So it's a teaching manual. Okay. But like I said before, you can't teach the kids with it on your lap. Oh, wait a minute, kids. <laughs> you have to have everything ready. So that is why you need to sit down and fill out your lesson book. Oh, with okay. math. We were on, last week we were on lessons 98, 99, 100, 101, 102. Mm -hmm. So those are chosen for you. They have like a little workbook they're looking workbook, through? Workbook, it's okay. all aligned with the standards. Mm -hmm. We do the same for science and social studies. Mm -hmm. Art is on your own. Mm -hmm. um, I just purchased some art books or word of mouth from other teachers, some great activities. Mm -hmm. And um, we also do very thematic Mm -hmm. Work in first grade, for example, it's March, so the kids created leprechauns out oh, of nice. paper, which also got them their, their cutting skills and their mm -hmm. gluing skills. And then last week, we worked on symmetry and making kites with bows. So oh, wow. And every art project has a skill. All right, the okay. The kites were making knots in symmetry. Wow, I We've like it. We've been doing poems about the wind. Okay. So really, each month, you take your curriculum and you kind of form it into what's going on that month. Spring mm -hmm. and St. Patrick's Day was this month. Right, okay, so we have the little leprechauns up here. That is so cool. I guess like in next week, you're, you'll be doing Easter stuff. Right. And Christmas, you're doing Santa Claus right. and all those goodies. And how it's gone lately is it's all holiday now. Okay. We, we refer to it as holiday. We'll be doing holidays. Yeah. We, you know, we don't really mention the words in Easter and Christmas anymore, which is okay. really, different from when I first became a teacher. Wow, that's very cool. Um, you had mentioned um, there, there was reading time. You're, you read to them? Is, there's, is there a specific hour or so you're reading them stories? And I close the day with reading a novel to the children mm -hmm. every day. Every day, okay. I believe it is so important to read to children and to emulate and they can watch how enjoyable reading is mm -hmm. and how much it affects you. And just to dive into a story and be there with that character. And you do the voices too, right? Oh, I do voices. <laughs> I love it. I do voices. I'm reading a novel right mm -hmm. now where last week, you know, the character, the lead character lost his horse. The horse sank in the swamps of sadness. <laughs> and 
I actually had a couple of kids cry. Wow. And it was very, we talked about it as a group and said it was okay wow. to get upset. And then I showed them how much of the book we have left. Oh my gosh, so, how you cute. Know, don't worry, it'll, it'll come up. Mm -hmm. And then I had the kids repeat me so they learn how to have um, dialogue and change their voices too. Oh my gosh, I love it. Are you guys kind of maybe getting on the carpet over there and everyone's oh, on yeah. their knees and just... I turn off the lights, I light my... No my not light, I use those um, automatic candles mm -hmm. and we get into it. I love it. The kids can't move unless there's a sad or scary or a happy part and they just... It's a great joy. It's my favorite thing I'm doing right uh, now. Do you do like field trips and, and goodies like that outside your, with your class? We or? do. You yes. do, do field trips? In fact, we have a field trip coming up. Mm -hmm. we, um, we're going to the Long Beach Aquarium. Now, is that your, you, you decided to do that or is that part of the? It is part of the first grade team's decision. Okay. And we decided, um, to. we looked it up and we decided it was a great place for our kids to go mm -hmm. because they will house all the first graders at once mm -hmm. and they will guide them around and not only are the kids going to just be walking through free exploration, they'll also be learning. Okay. Um, so that is a great field trip to go on. Yeah, I always love those. We still use our yellow buses. Is that right? <laughs> yes. I love it. <laughs> Now, do you have uh, like guest speakers or anything like that that you set up, or is that that's more maybe of an older type? Yeah, of you could definitely older. What we have at mm -hmm. our school is we have programs that come in. We have mm -hmm. a fantastic art program called Young at Art, mm -hmm. and a parent literally comes in with a cart and all the supplies. Oh, okay. And I get to hang back and just kind of mediate the children while mm -hmm. she teaches, and they learn about an artist. Mm -hmm. They also had a pantomime class this year. Wow. And who would have thought pantomime? Right. That's awesome. Would have done wonders for these kids. I have kids now that talk in front of the class, smile, they use their their real voice instead of the soft one ever since they did pantomime. Wow. I'm trying to think what else we've done. We do something called Run Club, mm -hmm. and that's to keep the body, they're fit and keep their bodies going. Okay. And that is every Wednesday, they wear a necklace with little plastic feet on it, and they run laps and they have a punch card. <laughs> So when they run 20 laps, they they're, get they're a, doing it outside here. Or they're um, doing we have a field. Okay. And when they run 20 laps, they get another plastic foot. So it's super motivating, and it's it's your personal best. How funny. And yeah. there's music class. They're in music class right now. What are you teaching? Are you you're teaching them? I this? teach music and singing in my class, singing songs. Wow. But what they're going to right now is professional singers. Hmm. Measuring their voices, reading notes. Wow. So they, they have a lot going on. There's a science lab here. Mm -hmm. There is also library and PE. Now, can you branch off if you have something um, that you want to share that's not on the curriculum from your bosses or from the, the, from the first grade? Sort something of can, that I do in here? Yeah, can you um, say you want to, um, I don't know, you want to do show and tell um, one week and, you know, it wasn't approved from the from the principal or something. Can you right. sort of branch off and do your own thing as a teacher you a little can, bit? As long as you are meeting the California state standards and mm -hmm. you have a good rapport with your principal. So it's gotta be inside the book, the California state standards to yes. sort of branch off but, there. But each teacher can take the standards and tailor it into any way you want. Okay. One of the standards is listening and speaking, being mm -hmm. able to listen and speak. Okay. So I have the kids come up and describe, bring something special from home and talk about it and describe it. Okay. So that is like a show and tell, but it's also teaching them public speaking, teaching the other kids to listen. The other kids either ask questions mm -hmm. or they give compliments. Nice. So I do that type of thing. Okay. So you have a little latitude to... We do. To, to do something that may be relevant to that time of the day. Mm -hmm. Good deal. The typical day. It sounds like such a fun job. It really is. I'm still glowing from my day today. Is that right? Yes. Gosh, working with kids and just walking in this classroom, it like brought back so many mm -hmm. memories it's of, just of being a kid. It's joyful in here. It's bright. It's joyful. And if you're a really dedicated teacher and you put in some extra hours, it just pays off so well. Let's switch gears for a minute. Let's talk about money. Um, no, I'm a college professor myself. We get paid by the class, but you guys are on salary. Mm -hmm. Is that right? We're on salary. Okay. And each year we're guaranteed to go down a step, mm -hmm. which means that's good, which means you, you, you get a pay raise. 
And so down a step is a, is a raise? You're climbing down. Climbing yes. down? Yes. Okay. To get to um, a higher amount. Okay. So you automatically go down to the next step. Mm -hmm. And in order to move horizontally, you can go to school and get more units. Okay. You can go get your master's degree. Okay. And you can move over the column the other way. Okay. Um, now, are you guys working in the summertime? or? We don't work in the summertime, but the way breaks have gone lately is <coughs> the, the kids are getting more breaks throughout the school year mm -hmm. than they have ever been given. You need to go to school 180 days. That's mm -hmm. how many days. Okay. So lately they've been giving us a whole week off for Thanksgiving instead of those two days. Mm -hmm. Okay. They've been giving, there's a ski week now in mm. addition to Easter. Okay. So what they did was they prolonged the school year so it goes till the end of June now. Okay. And then July, I'd say you, you, you do get a good six weeks off. It's just six weeks. Yeah, but August comes and elementary school teachers, they just get back into it. Is that right? They start decorating, they get their, go to the teacher store, get new materials, mm -hmm. meet with your team, mm -hmm. plan your year. Mm -hmm. So, but that's something secondary teachers you know, I'm sure they don't decorate as much as we do. <laughs> so I would say <laughs> they spend a little more time enjoying their summer. For those six weeks that you're not working, you're not getting paid, or you are getting paid? Um, if you're smart, then you set aside. So you're not getting paid? I do not get paid. For I those choose, six weeks? You can choose 10 months salary, or you can choose 12 months salary. Okay. I choose 10 months, but every single month I put a chunk away. Okay, that's so interesting. You in can choose. Summer, that's my that's my money. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. And um, other teachers choose to get paid every month. They go on the 12 month. Okay. It's uh, so paycheck once a month instead of like bi-weekly? Oh yeah, once a month. Oh, interesting. Wow, you better manage your money well. Right. Right. Oh my gosh. Yes, wow. that's another thing you need to be really good about. Okay. Um, what about benefits? We obviously health and dental and all those goodies. Te the teaching the field definitely has good benefits still. Okay. My premium has raised, but that's not the fault of education. Mm -hmm. But as far as the benefits go, we have behavioral health, we have dental, vision, and medical, mm -hmm. which is just regular health care. When you say your premium raise, is that the money that's taken out of your check to pay your yes, insurance? per month. Okay, so it raised up um, significantly, or? It has slowly creeped up throughout the years. Okay. But that's something our state is Lovely. doing to us. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Uh, I was curious, um, when you first get back to school, you probably have open houses and, and things like that, and that's mm -hmm. all encompassed in your, in your salary. You're, you're expected to be here. You're expected to be here, even if you're, well, in back to school nights at nighttime, you're mm -hmm. not getting extra pay. Right, okay. Wow. How yeah. many hours do you spend about a week doing this? I don't know if I should say. Is it that high? Yes. It's scary. Let, tell them, let them know. Spill I the beans. I would say I bring work <laughs> home with me. I, like, here's an example. Last mm -hmm. night I was grading tests till 11 at night. Okay, wow. And so you I got here at 8? I started at 8. Wow, geez. So that's four hours on a Sunday. That's and a long day. And I also day. came here for two hours to make my copies. Wow. So just on a Sunday, I worked six hours. Wow, busy girl. And if you add, I don't, if you add two hours a day to my schedule and the half hour I come early, mm -hmm. wow. that'll get you. 60 plus, maybe? But not everyone has to do that. That's mm -hmm. just the dedication that I have. Let's talk about the good stuff. What do you love about being a teacher? My favorite thing about being a teacher is not one day is the same, mm -hmm. I, and I don't sit down. I am all okay. over this classroom. I am there for the children, and I'm shaping. I mean, this sounds kind of cliche, but I truly am shaping the future. Yeah. And being a first grade teacher, you teach the kids how to read. Wow. I, there's two kids in here that were not readers. Mm -hmm. And they were in a special service, special services on campus. They both graduated out. Wow. And this is, a, this is only a once a week program for 40 minutes, mm -hmm. which means they learn how to read in my classroom. Wow. And that right there is the joy of teaching. Mm -hmm. And also another thing I, I do on my own is I really work on social development in here. Mm -hmm. How we treat each other. Mm -hmm how we ask for things. Mm -hmm. 
Um, manners matter is one of my sayings that I say a lot in here. Okay. Nice. Uh, we hold the door open for another person if we're, you know, going out to use the restroom. Okay. So that's something I do extra. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm a teacher as well. You know what I, I love about it is, like you said, you're, you're changing their lives for the better. Seeing it happen in front of you. Living a healthier, richer, fuller life because, you know, teachers are involved in their life. And just yearning to go to the next grade and the next grade. Isn't it such a special feeling when you teach them, say, a math problem and they get it? And sometimes I'll get the chills. Oh, yeah. You know, when you're in front of a class and they get it and the light bulb goes off. And what an incredible feeling. Well, I had a little girl read a sentence the other day and she first looked at it thinking she wouldn't mm -hmm. be able to read it. And she read it and just went. <laughs> and there I had tears. Is that right? Is, uh, that's amazing. And I even shared with the class. Yeah. Can we all give, you know, this little girl a round of applause? Oh, wow. So, and she's just sitting there, just, oh. How very cool. What is not so fabulous about this career, if anything, about being a teacher? Uh, not so fabulous is the extra time you put in, and mm. you don't get overtime in teaching. And it really is, really is a big deal. You really put extra hours in. And, mm -hmm. you know, we've gotten the stigma that we get summers off. It's really not summers off, because we do go to the end of June. We get about six weeks. And the time, I always like to say to, to teachers, in late August or mid-August, when you open your classroom for the first time, it is a 24-hour job. Wow. Until the last day, the day after the last day of school, because you have to check out mm -hmm. and you know turn your key in. It is a 24-hour job. Mm -hmm. OK, lots of hours. So. It could be a downfall because there's things that, you know, that I need to get done in my life or in my, you know, at my home at night, but mm -hmm. I'll have to do something teaching instead. Mm -hmm. Do you ever, um, are you ever concerned with, is there a problem child that might uh, mm. maybe just be such a, a problem? You've got to get on the phone with the parents and maybe they're yes. difficult or, or issues yes. with problem kids. Is that ever? That's a big issue mm -hmm. uh, when there's the problem kid. But once again, going to school. Mm -hmm. Getting your credential, you will have those um, those hypothetical groups that mm -hmm. will go over all the problem kids, mm -hmm. and you always have the backup of your principal. Mm -hmm. So if it's something you can't handle, or if you want advice first and then make the call, mm -hmm. you go to your principals and you go to your team members. Okay, who are the team members? Kira? Oh, my team members mm -hmm. are three other first grade teachers. Okay, and we meet once a week, mm -hmm. and so. What we do is do a framework of what our week's going to look like, mm -hmm. but we all have our own teaching mm -hmm. styles. Okay, good deal. Do you? Uh, we always end with a funny story of some kind. Did something funny or interesting happen to, to you? Something really funny happened. <laughs> um, let's see. Last Monday, another outsider came in to teach the kids about their brain and their thinking. It's mm -hmm. called Hooked on Health, mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily exercising and eating right. It's your brain. Okay. Like your hippocampus and all the other names, and the kids are using those words. Mm -hmm. So she came to visit last uh, Monday. She hadn't been here in a week, and she asked class, what is the part of your brain that helps you make decisions? Mm -hmm. And a little first grader raises his hand so confident and says, the part that helps you is your hippopotamus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hippo! That made my whole week. <laughs> and it was only Monday. <laughs> that is pretty funny. Yeah, hippopotamus. Yes. Good deal. Do you have any advice for young people you want to share um, before we wrap people, it up? Young people, just get into a school. Um, meet the teacher. I was very you know, personal with my teachers. Meet with them after. See if there's anything extra you can do. And do the work. Just go above and beyond and get yourself into a classroom as soon as you can to, you know, to, re to get involved with these students and see how they tick. That's how you're going to better know how to handle situations. Good deal. There you have it, how to be a first grade teacher. Andrea, thank you. Oh, we appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having me. You had fun. Well, there you have it, how to become a first grade teacher. We'd like to thank Andrea Badovic for joining us today. I'm Freddie Cochran for California Careers. Take care.